session we'll be discussing on the universal forwarder configurations and also we'll be spinning up a couple of uh, universal forwarders and later uh, we'll be uh, pushing a couple of apps and configurations to universal forwarders with the help of deployment server all right so we'll be creating a deployment server so and uh, let us try to create two universal forwarder just to showcase how exactly we can push the configurations across uh, different uh, universal forwarders and uh, i'm just creating one you know one indexer so which will which will help us to store the data from the universal forwarder right so this is the deployment server which i'm creating and i'll just say this is uh, universal forwarder one and this is a uh, universal forwarder And this will be my index, right? You got the agenda, right? So will be uh, the main intention of uh, of today's session is that we will have to ingest the data to our Splunk indexer, and meantime, whatever the configurations uh, we are doing, we are not uh, performing any of the configuration changes on the universal forwarder. Instead, we will be um, making the configuration changes on the deployment server and from here we'll push the configurations to the universal forwarder so this is the real time scenario because in most of our organizations or most in most of our projects we'll be uh, having you know uh, plenty of uh, universal forwarders and uh, heavy forwarders and also syslog servers or hex servers so for example we may have hundreds of servers or so sometimes we may have thousands of servers so it uh, you know it is not good practice to go ahead and configure uh, an individual uh, forwarders right so that's it that's the reason this deployment server will act as a master to all the forwarders so once again these forwarders can be universal forwarder can be a heavy forwarder or can be a syslog or can be a HTTP when collector. So in our subsequent uh, sessions, I'll also try to uh, create one of the heavy forwarder and uh, we'll also push the configurations and uh, apps from the development server to the uh, heavy forwarder. Even we can create some syslog and even you know, we'll also create some uh, HTTP when collector and we'll deploy through our deployment server. Right. So at this point of time, so this will be kind of my master to all the my forwarders so that with the with the help of the deployment server configurations we'll be pushing the necessary apps and configuration to universal forwarder and from the universal forwarder we'll be forwarding the data to our indexer right so let me tell you here so for uh, this is the, uh, there is always good practice to create a multiple applications or multiple apps or folders on the deployment server for example my requirement to install universal forward on a universal forward on a particular machine might different when when we compare to any other universal forward devices for example let's say this is my tomcat application okay and this particular top uh, the tomcat application folder structures and the requirement will be completely different right so i, I may look for some of the log files of Tomcat server. And for example, if I'm installing some of the. Uh, uh, let's consider this is a Java application. Right, so here I'll have to install some of the uh, universal forwarder and I'll have to I'll have to configure it and later I'll have to read a couple of read. I mean, I'll have to read a couple of log files from the from this universal forwarder called the universal forwarder too, which means our requirement will be keep on changing as and when we add a new universal forwarder right so it so that is the reason so we we we, we cannot put everything on all the configurations and apps on a single photo right so hence we will be creating you know uh, uh, individual apps for a particular forwarder in this case i make i may plan to create app one folder and I, I'll push it to universal forwarder one. And similarly, I may create app two, right? So I may push these configurations to this particular client, which means we will be maintaining unique configurations on the forwarders. Hence, 
whatever the configurations or whatever the uh, apps or folder we create, we will not be putting under all the folders. Please understand this one, right? Based on my need, for example, for this universal folder room, we may need a certain configurations. So I will, I will be identifying those configurations and I'll be putting under app one. And while deploying our client, I'll make sure that this particular app should get selected rather than all the apps. So which means I will not be configuring all the apps which are available on the deployment server. Instead, based on my need, I will be configuring a particular application or app on a particular folder. And again, we have a mechanism to route the data to our indexes. So that can be achieved with the help of outputs.configuration. We will we, we'll see that, right? So for now, uh, we need uh, one indexer, one universal folder, and one deployer. Uh, I mean, we'll have two universal folder, one deployer and indexer, right? So let us spin up four instances right away. All right. So what I'll do uh, just to showcase our different flavors uh, of Splunk, let me try to install, let me try to create uh, Red Hat Linux and we'll configure, you know, uh, We'll create a Red Hat Linux machine uh, for deployment server and also for the indexer. And for universal forwarders, let me try to create Ubuntu Linux. Right. So just to showcase you now to uh, to get familiar on the installation process. So I'm just selecting different flavors. So we'll see how it works. Right, so uh, with this, we'll, we'll be installing our Splunk on Red Hat Linux and also on the, I mean, uh, we'll be installing our uh, Splunk universal folder on the Ubuntu operating system machines. All right, so in this case, let me just uh, create two instances with the help of Amazon Web Services. So let me just if something called Splunk, later we can modify. So as of now, I'm creating a two instances, which is of Red Hat Linux. So typically uh, for Splunk, most of the uh, uh, most of the Splunk components we prefer to use are uh, you know, Red Hat Linux as an operating system. And let me go with uh, the default one because they're not in just much of the data. And uh, let me try to create a security group. So let me create it a new one. And later we can modify the security group and let me try to increase. So as a free tire, free tire eligible customers, then up to 30 GB of uh, EBS volume we can opt. But uh, as of now, I'm just going with uh, a 20 GB of, or even if you want, you can give 30 GB of uh, EBS volume, right? And also I've mentioned uh, number of instances as to uh, somewhere I need to mention the key right yeah so as of now i have already created the key so let me just uh, grab that key NV key yeah this is a key which i have uh, which i'm already having and uh, this is a pem file which i'll be downloading and later uh, that has been already converted to our dot bpk file so that that can be utilized by putty yeah clicking on launch instances now I should be able to see the two uh, instances, which is of Red Hat Linux, right? All right. And let me rename this as Splunk Indexer. Similarly, this is a deployment server, right? So, yep. Both are in running state. Let me try to install Splunk software on the Splunk indexer, right? So once again, I'm reiterating in a Splunk word, it can be, uh, you know, Splunk heavy powder or Splunk uh, syslog or HTTP event collector or uh, license master, deployment server, deployer, whatever the components we have, except universal powders, right? So we will have to, the common procedure is that we will have to install a Splunk Enterprise software, right? So, uh, and based on some of the uh, settings, 
we may consider this as a deployment server or this can be considered as a indexer. So which means in short, we will have to install a Splunk HTTP software on all the machines. And before that, let me try to open Splunk. So how to download Splunk? Splunk free download. Let me log into my credentials. Uh, let me stop the sharing. Let me log in to our my Splunk website. All right, I hope this screen is visible to you. So I just logged in with my credentials and this is a Splunk, Splunk uh, website and I'm opting for free Splunk. So you can click on this free trial and download pages. And uh, as we are looking Splunk Enterprise, right? So we have many uh, options, Splunk Cloud Platforms, Splunk Enterprise, Universal Forwarders, right? So as of now, I need my Splunk Enterprise software that needs to be installed. So once you click there, you will you will end up with you know multiple options here. So see, uh, this is for Windows, and similarly for uh, for Linux, we have this option. And see again, uh, we have Debian package, DZZ, and RPM uh, packages. So in this example, let me try to uh, you know uh, install. RPM package so that uh, you now I can showcase this installation part as well. And uh, probably for the universal forwarder, let me try to uh, install with the help of Debian package. Right? So these are the different flavors which are available for the Linux machines. OK, so for now, let me try to go ahead and uh, install a Splunk Enterprise with the help of RPM package. OK, just click on download. So you necessarily you don't need to download any of the packages. So just cancel it. Once uh, that is done, so see you will you will see one option called command line option. So just click here. So with the help of this RPM command R RPM uh, packages, uh, so we'll try to install our Splunk Enterprise software. All right, so let me get back and I think my instances are uh, up and running. So click on, I mean, yeah, let's go to uh, indexer. Let me grab the IP and open the putty. And I have already converted my uh, .pem file to a PPK file. It is already there, so I just renamed as uh, NV private key. Open. Accept the cert. And what is the default username for uh, Red Hat Linux? It is EC2 user. All right, so I have logged into my uh, server. Now, what is the next step? I'll have to uh, see as we are uh, using multiple servers, uh, servers, right? So we may get confused. It is always good practice uh, to uh, set a host name to this particular server so that we'll not get confused with the IP addresses. So in order to do that, you need to log in as a root user. So and afterwards, you need to use a uh, host name CTL set host. OK, before that, let me show. Uh, where exactly we see uh, host name. So there is something called as uh, under etc folder, we have something called as host name. Right? So if you just uh, open this one, so this is the name of the server. So hence it is showing the uh, IP addresses. When I say IP addresses, this will be the private, uh, private IP addresses will be there. So because as and when we restart our, uh, you know, any of the uh, servers or ECD instance on our AWS, then private public IP gets changed. 
whereas private IP remains same. So that's the reason most of our instances uh, will be assigned with our private IP just to maintain their visibility. All right. So we got to know this is the name we have and how to change it. So I've already logged in as a root user. So should use host name or you can also edit this page, you know, this file and you can give it. But oh, let me use this one for now. Host name CTL set host name. And what is this one? So this is Splunk uh, indexer. Okay, let's see. Now, if you just uh, open that file, you should be able to see. Splunk indexer, right? And going forward, which uh, once you again log in, uh, log back, I mean, once you log in to your uh, uh, this server, then instead of this IP, you'll be able to see this Splunk indexer. I mean, it will come here. We'll see that. So, fine. So, I've just um, renamed this one. Or in order to show that, let me try to uh, duplicate the session. Let me log in as ECT user. See, this is the thing, right? This is what I was saying. So now your IP address got replaced with your uh, host name detail, which you are given, right? So, so that it will be easier for us to deal with our uh, Splunk software. I mean, Splunk server names. All right. So now, now let's come to our ins installation part. So installation part. So we need to get into this one so on before that we need to check whether we have a ww get so i'll just say so yeah start your get let's see yeah so this is a w get uh, package which i'm installing so because i'll be making use of w get command in my installations so let me copy this command i mean let me copy this one and yeah it is asking me the confirmation. Let me click on why. Now this package has been already installed. And once that's, that is done, we'll have to install, we'll have to import or we'll have to uh, get that Splunk Enterprise package to my local machine. So how do we do that? I'll just uh, I'll just have to copy this command and later just have to paste it and click on enter. And so now the whatever the package of Splunk interface of uh, 9.0.4, which is you know uh, extracting here and which has saved here. So if you can do ls, then you'll be able to see this particular package has been come to your local machine. And once you have this package, and this is a dot rpm package, right? So you need to install this package with this command. So uh, it needs a privileged uh, a permission. So hence I'm just using sudo command uh, sudo rpm and I for installations, uh, v for workers mode and h for human readable format. And this is a command which I'll be using uh, to install my Splunk software. You got it right. So this is the RPM package. Uh, I for I refers installations V for verbose mode and H for human readable format. So this is the package name which I have given. And once that is up, so just hit enter. Now uh, it is getting installed. See, I'm uh, updating or uh, install. See the with the help of wget command, you you got your uh, necessary packages to install your. Uh, Splunk software on your local machine. And once you get that, once you get this package, then with the help of this command, uh, we'll be able to install your Splunk Enterprise software on this machine. Now it is almost completed. Yeah. Now, after you install your Splunk software, then you'll have to accept the license, right? So in order to do that, you need to log in with a root user. So let me log in with a root user. Then what is the command? OPT. See, whatever the uh, Splunk software which we have installed, so this is there under OPT. Let me show you here. See, this is the Splunk folder which got created as and when the, we complete when when it completes the execution of this particular command, right? So 
uh, let me just it is Splunk bin. So see uh, OPT Splunk bin, right? So here we'll have the executable files. So that is the reason. Or let me get into this one and I'll show. So going forward, if you want to execute any of the commands, see we have this Splunk executable file. So with the help of this this executable file, we'll be executing multiple commands. So going forward, if you want to execute any of the commands with the help of command line, I mean from the back end, you need to come to this location. This is must and should, right? So you need to come to this location, OPT Splunk bin, then only this will allow us to execute some of the commands, right? All right. Now I am already in the bin folder. Then let me uh, st start the Splunk by accepting the license. Accept license. And it will ask me to give a username. Please give a simple username and password. So in this case, I'm giving admin as a username and uh, admin123 as my password. I'll have to re-enter my password. All right, so then uh, once it is available. Then let me grab my uh, public IP of my indexer and let me try to open with the port 8000. Let's wait still it is uh, spinning up. Now my indexer is ready. So what it is saying? So this plug indexer is available with this port. But it is not coming. Why? Because we have not opened any of the ports. I mean, we have not opened any of the ports in the security group. So let's look at the security group. Right? So yeah, this is a security group which we have created. And if you can look at the inbound rules, so we just enabled uh, TCP uh, 22 SSH port, but not the A triple zero or eight zero eight nine which are triple n7 whatever we needed so for now uh, let me just allow all the traffic but it is not good practice so just you need to identify what are the ports which are needed and accordingly you need to enable them right now it is done let me try to open this here see now that particular uh, port we have uh, allowed hence i'm able to log into my splunk software <coughs> and I'm consider this. I'm considering this component is acting as a. This component is acting as a Splunk indexer, right? So, what is the necessary configuration I'll have to do if it has to work as a indexer? I need to come to settings. I need to get into forwarding and receiving, and we call this as a receiver. Indexer is also called as a receiver. So, we need to come to this section receive data and click on configure receiving. And as we know, uh, we'll have to configure 997 port on your indexer. With this settings, with this settings, this particular server will act as a indexer going forward. If you don't enable this particular triple and seven port, then this will never act as an indexer, right? So this is the unique configuration which we'll be doing on the indexer so that uh, it start you know receiving the logs from a different servers. Now indexer is ready. Now what is the next step? Let me go to instances. I love to install my development server right so it, it it's almost same right so we'll just follow the similar steps uh, i think we have everything so let me just quickly open the putty and let me put my ip address and also let me add my pk file 
we can open and this is the Red Hat Linux. So then the default username which I'm giving as a ECT user. Right. And as a first steps, we need to check for the delegate rate. Right? So so to do uh, install W get. So this package, most of the case, I mean, it's mostly in Ubuntu, it will be there, uh, but it is always good practice to check if you have the delegate else, uh, we can always go ahead and download it. And meantime, let me come to here and I'm planning to install the same Splunk software. So I just have to do delegate. So which means uh, this particular Splunk 9.0.4 uh, software, which is in a Splunk website. So this RPM package, I'm just copying into my local machine. Now, if you just do LS, it has come to your local machine. And afterwards, you need to install this one. So install this RPM package, how to do that? So sudo, we need a privileged access. So I'm just entering as a sudo RPM, okay, if an IVH, and this is the package. <clears throat> so it is verifying and it gets downloaded in some time. We will wait for the installations and also we forgot to update our host name, but we'll do that right, right after this installations. OK. All right, I think it's completed. Now uh, we have the necessary packages, so I need to start right. So let me log in as a root user. And in the last uh, installation, we did execute our command with the help of, I mean, we did getting into Splunk OPT, Splunk and bin, and later we executed Splunk start, Splunk start command, right? So, so, Every time it is not also a good practice to getting into uh, my bin folder directly. So before, I mean, instead of coming into this location, uh, if you could execute this option, for example, let's say I'm here. Instead of getting into bin location and executing the uh, Splunk command, there is another option, opt Splunk bin Splunk start iPhone, iPhone, accept license. So which means, so I'm giving the complete path where my ex executables are, my, where my binaries are there. So which means you, you don't need to log into, you don't need to getting into this particular uh, uh, path. Instead, wherever the locations you are, from there you can execute with this command. So this is the prefix. So op slash opt splunk bin splunk start accept license and it is asking me uh, uh, username and password. So let me try to maintain the same username and password so that I not forget any of the passwords. Let me one, two, three, I have given. So username as admin and password as admin one, two, three. Now, this is also ready. All right, now it is visible and uh, now yeah, it is ready also. And we forgot to update our uh, host name. So host name CTL uh, set host name. And what is this? This is Splunk deployment server. Okay, so let me change it and let me check whether it has been updated or not. Yeah, this has been updated. And now I'll just have to uh, copy the IP address of this one and let me open with. Let me open this on a browser, the help of port 8000. Let me add me one. All right. Uh, so this is about your installations of um, 
Splunk Enterprise software on your machines. So with this, we are, we uh, installed Splunk 9.0.4 version on on my two servers and the first server I'm considering as a indexer and second server which I'm considering as a deployment server. We'll see how to configure deployment server in, in our upcoming sessions, right? So as of now, uh, we have just, you know, we have just pinned up a uh, uh, deployment server and Red Hat Linux on the indexer. So these two are uh, set up now. We will have to in, in our next session. I'll be uh, installing and configuring universal forwarder on Ubuntu machines, and later we'll establish a connection between all these two. Right. So thanks for watching. So let me stop my recording.